Matt, I'm so glad you could join me today. How have you been? I've been uh, I've been great. We had a good night last night at the Golden Globes, and pretty thrilled and excited about that. Yeah, that was great. I mean, I think the movie took home uh, three awards and I don't know how many nominations, but I actually saw it yesterday morning, and so it, it made all those wins you know, even better because I was like, oh, "Crap, that was that was a great movie, great experience." So I, you know, I thought great. it was all well deserved. Great, thank you. Yeah, and so obviously we're talking about West Side Story. You were involved as the uh, executive music producer. And so you know, a lot of my coverage is uh, more about film composers, mm -hmm. um, you know, some orchestrators. So not everyone listening might fully know what a music producer does. So would you mind giving us the 30,000 view, 30,000 foot <laughs> yeah. view, and then we'll we'll dig into it a little more? Yeah, um, so I have a very unique role in film, um, especially since uh, back in uh, back in uh, 2002, I my first experience uh, on a film set, uh, well, not on a film set, but my first experience on a big musical was Chicago. And ever since then, I kind of developed this role uh, for myself, which I, it's kind of like, filling in different, you know, pieces that really needed to be done on, on the in pre production and on the film set. So my overall view is I start with helping out with the casting uh, you know the better uh, who who can perform the part we're working with the director and the casting director on that and then guiding the actors through rehearsals through pre-records through being on set for what I call like performance sorry there's a truck going by <laughs> uh, performance uh, performance you know, working with them with lip sync or or live singing, which we do more and more, and then through post production, uh, working with composers, uh, music editors. Uh, I do a lot of vocal work myself in Pro Tools and just oversee the uh, whole post production process and mixing a lot of mixing. Wow! So yeah, that that's such a absurd amount of tasks going on. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I know on, on this, it was basically since, well, not the literal inception, since this is, you know, West Side Story's been around for, well, you know, 60 plus years. Um, but, you know, I know that you were interested in the project since uh, you first heard about it, I think around five years ago. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, it's, you know, I always keep an eye out uh, for what's happening in the industry. And uh, as soon as I heard about it, I, you know, I chased it down and I really, really wanted to be a part of it. You know, being part of a Steven Spielberg film, probably being his first music supervisor, music producer that he's ever worked with. Uh, you know, his main guy is John Williams and have a chance yeah. to, you know, be in the room sitting with John Williams. So it was something that I I wanted more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> and And as you mentioned it, kind of being probably his first experience with someone with your type of role, was there a bit of a, a learning curve between the two of you kind of working together or it was it pretty seamless? It, it felt seamless. It really did. You know, he's such a collaborator and, and he's such a giving warm person. And our, from our first meeting, it's, it just, he, you know, he of course has done his research and he's like, well, I know I need this person. What does he do? So our first meeting was like, I know I need you, but just tell me why I need you so I understand it. As, uh, so we're both on the same page. And I just had the chat. It was pretty much what I said to you. And, um, and, and you know, it's, it's pretty, my first, my first talk with him, I said, look, you know, just like you have a visual effects supervisor on the film where, you know, you need to know what you can actually shoot and how you're going to shoot and how you can incorporate visual effects. I'm there for the music. So anything that's done with music, you know, we have to protect, like we have to protect that there's only so much music to shoot. There's, you know, so you have tempo and bars and beats. And, and so I'm there just to make sure when we're shooting, the film will cut together, the performance will look correct. And, uh, and it'll be, you know, the camera's moving with the music and everything feels completely seamless. So that it's, uh, we were pretty much on the same page right from the beginning. And, and he, uh, uh, the second meeting was, okay, here, we, we're off and running. Here's how I want to do it. And then we just started going through each song. So how did, how did that process go of, of going through, through it song by song? Well, he's, I mean, it, I, I, I think, and I don't want to 
get any other directors upset at me, but, the, but, you know, just if you look at that, you know, Steven, you know, all his interviews and his conversation with me is he got this record from the Broadway show when he was about 10 years old. And so he's been living with this music for a long time. So he knows it, uh, he knows it inside and out. So, uh, our first meetings were let's get right into it and when he listened to that broadway cast album he's a visual visual genius and he had these ideas of how he wanted to uh, to block and shoot these numbers and and have them in where in the streets and so we got right into it and he had storyboards already created uh probably you know from the very, very beginning. And he started showing it to me and David Newman, who is our, our score arranger, um, helped us adapt the score from the Broadway show into this new version. And uh, we, the three of us sat in a room and went song by song and, and, and beat by beat and, and, and look, looking through the storyboards. And eventually I just, you know, I asked Steven, I said, can I take the storyboards with an editor and start creating what we call automatics, which is you take the storyboards and you, you can slide the camera around and make it feel like there's motion. You can actually, you know, with like the Photoshopping inside of, yeah. uh, you can move characters and, and basically we, we cut the storyboards to the music. So when we showed up on set, every time that we started rolling cameras, I knew where the action had to begin, where it had to end, had to make sure if the production designer that we had enough set to get the camera, you know, it's a crane camera, how much, how, how much, how much can we suck in the crane to get, to get the action? So it was, uh, that, that was my responsibility on the set. And it all stemmed from all of our work in pre-production. Wow. And how, how long did the pre-production process go? Um, I think it was about uh, with rehearsals and everything. For me, I would say it was about six or seven solid months, like of actual real work. Uh, you know, we had prep, a little bit of more prep, but getting into how it was going to be shot, rehearsals, um, vocal rehearsals, dance rehearsals. It was it was it was about probably six or seven months before we started shooting. I mean, it you know, it seems like it paid off just because. Well, obviously, there are some more contained pieces, like the the opening prologue, for instance, is yeah. this sweeping, uh, you know, six minute or so piece. And while it's not, you yeah. know, there's there's music that I don't think there's, um, you know, any singing, but it's still just this like no wide ranging, um, you know, uh, choreographed session going across this. A portion of the city that you know we find out the whole movie is going to take place in. Yeah, that was an interesting piece. It was probably one of the most, and I, I don't want to say difficult, but because it wasn't difficult, but challenging. It was one of the most challenging pieces because there is no singing. So therefore, you know, when you have singing, you can say he starts singing this line and then he ends on this line. So it's very, very simple. But it, there's the prologue music from the Broadway show that we were that we were um, grabbing from, and a little bit a little bit of what they did in 1961. But it was mostly from the Broadway show. So the shots that we're shooting, we had to time out, and 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 it was the most that I was on Pro Tools um, working in, in music editing in pre-production that piece together to the storyboards, and we had to when we were you know just getting a truck going down the road with watermelons in it and then opening it up. It's like on paper, it's, it's, oh, we can do that in three seconds. But when you're actually shooting, it's like a little bit, it could be a little bit longer. So we had to really, when we were rehearsing all the bits and pieces with the stunt people and everything, we had to really time out and how much music we needed because in the end of the day, it's, there's only so much prologue Bernstein music that we can draw from. And if we have 12 minutes of material, some of it's not going to, you know, make make it in the film but there's very little that we i don't think we have really i can't think of anything that we shot that didn't really make it into the prologue it was very well planned out hmm. and and actually on that point because you're effectively working off of music that was written i don't know uh, 65 years ago or so mm -hmm. uh, you know there's i'm sure there's a certain latitude to to change it and you know expand it or contract it or cut pieces or add it and you know working with david newman on it mm -hmm. but how much of that was constricting what you're able to do as well it was actually 
we we worked very closely with the Leonard Bernstein organization and the gentleman there, their musicologist, um, Garth uh, Sunderland, and and you know we the the children of Bert, Leonard Bernstein, you know we all had conversations and formed very very close relationships with 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 uh, Leonard Bernstein's children, and we wanted to respect completely what was written. Um, and the orchestrations and the arrangements. So we did that. And uh, and it wasn't a whole lot of um, changing it because also, also it's, this score is beautifully written, beautifully orchestrated and arranged. So we did some tweaks to orchestration, very, very light. Um, sometimes if we needed an extra four bars of music, we drew upon what was there. So we, uh, we stuck really closely to what was there. And there's a, there's a, for me, I feel like there's a modernization to the score, mainly because if you watch it in theaters, which is obviously the best place yeah. to watch it, and especially if you're watching, you know, we recorded in Atmos, for Atmos, or 7.1 or or 5.1, and because when you're in the theater, the modernization comes from the way we mixed it, uh, bringing Gustavo Dunamel in to record the New York Philharmonic and bringing his his interpretation with the conducting and uh and and it's there's this modernization also from the actors and these young people of today you know the average age of i think it was of our actors was like 22 hmm. so and uh and so the excitement and everything it's all comes from uh, all comes from uh from those different factors and and actually on that last point of talking with the, mm -hmm. the cast that you're working with you know i think there's Depending on the musical, I think it can go one way or the other of, of having a cast of far more well-known people, or I'd say for the most part in West Side Story, the vast majority of the cast are you know, people that your viewer isn't really going to be familiar with. Mm -hmm. Was there, does that present any particular challenges or um, make things easier? Well, I can speak to my... Um, actually, I can say lack of challenges, uh, you know, <laughs> because uh, because it's the, the casting is, is something that for, for the most part, I've um, many times I'm involved in the casting process. On this film, we brought in Janine to, well, I didn't bring in, but uh, Stephen brought in with Tony Kushner's writing partner, Janine Tesori, who's huge on Broadway, uh, composer in her, in her own right, uh, to to help create this cast of a lot of Broadway and stage people. So for me, the for me the you know they they presented me with a cast that you know just knew exactly how to perform this material and perform it to the the best. I think that a lot of it has ever been been done. Um, and uh, my my job for this one was taking this young cast and and guide them through the the filmmaking process how a film gets made, how we do it on the film set, uh, and, and making, sure, making sure that all the performances feel as real as possible. So when you're watching it, you're not feeling like, oh, but did, you know, did that, are they really singing or anything? It's, for me, watching this movie is you know, one of the best versions of it's seamless between dialogue and singing. It's, it just flows and, and you're completely hooked into the movie. Yeah, but, I mean, I. But, but the cast is just overall. I mean, you know, quadruple threats. They're just every one. There's not. There's not. There's not a bad apple in the bunch. They're all just <laughs> fantastic. Well, I think that was one of the you know great joys for me is because I'm not a huge musical person, mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, watching it, you know, you're right. It's it's seamless from you know, your your typical dramatic acting and, mm -hmm. and dialogue to moving into these dance numbers and, and vocal performances. And it never, it never feels like it's out of place or that, you know, there's a, a hard abrupt break, but yeah. I guess, you know, one thing that you mentioned that uh, was interesting is having to guide the cast in, you know, moving from Broadway and performing on stage to the filmmaking process and to make what they're doing come off as, as believable and realistic mm -hmm. to the extent that, you know, it can in a musical. And so, I mean, what are some of the challenges that that presents and how do you guide the, the cast through that? Yeah. I mean, it's a difficult answer to give because 
it's a natural process and it's very it's it, and and it's and so there's nothing where it's you can't do this you have to do this uh, you know it's very very small things like eye lines you know uh, giving a correct eye line and 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 also when you're when you're performing and and singing where some you know maybe some stage people feel they have to hit the back of the row and that's something that we you know sometimes have to pull them back from but it's it's very it's a very natural process so it's nothing that kind of becomes very evident it's just we just do it i don't you know i have no other other way to say it <laughs> yeah yeah oh it's that's fine if that's if that's yeah. what happens that's what happens right yeah i mean and also like you know this this musical it's one of the you know, best written musicals, the score is, you know, completely bombastic in the places where it needs to be. And then it's sweet and tender where, it, you know, in the romance. And then you have the beautiful lyrics of Stephen Sondheim, which drive the story, tell a story within the song. And so therefore people that are non-musical fans, um, some of my friends uh, love this movie even more than most movies I've done because it is it is a well constructed musical that goes from drama into singing seamlessly and and uh, and and the songs are just you know I mean they're classic and they're they're hooky and they're also classic at the same time. Well, that's I, I mean that must present its own challenge because you know, I mean I haven't I hadn't seen the 1961 version in quite a while. I remember watching it quite a few times when I was younger in, in like music and yeah. choir classes. Um, and so in my mind, I, you know, I had a few songs that I remembered and then watching the film, it was basically every song being like, Oh yeah. I yeah. That. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's gotta have some pressure to it. You know, adapting something that's yeah. so classic, you know, 60 years later and then especially to you know um i can't remember exactly when if it was you know right before the film's release of uh, stephen sondheim passing as well yeah I mean, it's just kind of a, a confluence of events yeah it's i mean for me for me it's uh the pressure i've been lucky enough in my career to be in the room for a lot of you know very incredible moments uh you know, recording and i am telling you of jennifer hudson comes to mind and working with Beyonce on Dream Girls and mm. Daniel Day Lewis working with Dan, you know meeting Daniel Day Lewis and working with him in the re, in the recording studio and on set you know one of their greatest living you know actors of our time and, and but you kind of I don't know how I do it but I just remove myself from that <laughs> from that you know you have little moments where you go pinch me wow is this really happening and then you just it's about the work and um and so a lot of it was that being in the room with john williams and, and stephen and and going through talking through the film and how we're how we're you know going to get these recordings done and, and what the process is and the workflow and and you know working it's it's uh some you know you take you, i remove the pressure take it out of my head because if if you if you let it get to you you're you're sunk in the water but <laughs> but yeah i just kind of just you just do the work and you do what's right for the movie it's always about what's right for the movie and you concentrate on that i mean did that did it ever get to you in your career i mean because you st it's not like you you know started on a, a small picture i mean you know you started 20 years ago in chicago which yeah. again huge movie tons of uh, a-list talent throughout yeah so uh yeah, no, I just, um, it's something for my career. I've been, I've been lucky and uh, I just, I, I, it's, it's, it's something that I just really can't describe. It's, it's my job relies a lot on, uh, on personality and, and guiding a lot of people, a big, you know, when I take, when I work on a musical, it's a big chunk of the movies on my shoulders. And, uh, and if I think about that, you know, it's, it's like any other job. Yeah. You know, as any other job in, in, in that people do, it is you know if you look at your responsibilities each day and and let them weigh on you, it's it's you're kind of you can't get your job done the way to the best of your abilities. Well, I mean, I'm I'm sure that's part of how you develop yourself as a a reliable person to work with. I mean, you know, recently working in uh, Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast as well, like you know basically getting every major musical under your belt like mm. it's I, I i guess it's totally right that you can't let it get to you or at least you know 
yeah. show that it does because you got to get you got to work. Yeah, it's uh, you know, um, I was talking to Alan Menken the other day, and he and I were just talking about. I'm working with him right now on a film called Disenchanted, which is the uh, sequel to mm -hmm. Enchanted, and uh, you know, Alan and I have a great working relationship because, you know, he lets me take Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin um, and these new songs for Enchanted and and kind of bring this what I call like a little bit more of a modernization and making it more accessible to people who may not like musicals, may may, may not be their thing. And and uh and I I help bring this 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 new creative uh aspect to the songs which you know aren't just for the musical people. And that seems to be something that I did unconsciously, but it's it's my I guess it's my reputation and uh, it's got, you know, kept me working. I mean, and has that, and you mentioned it being unconscious, has, does that ever come to the forefront of your mind as, as your career has moved on of thinking, okay, how can, how can we modernize these a little bit for, you know, the current audience versus the audience that existed when, you know, let, let's say when, uh, you know, A Ladder, Beauty and the Beast or yeah. West Side Story first came out? Well, when like you take the Beauty and the Beast in the original, and and it it is, it it is a a Broadway score set to a animation film, and when you bring it to live action, you don't have that 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 um, fantasy world of animation, and you have a real live living person playing Belle, and you know Emma Watson and I talked a lot about who she was. So when I called it with her. The bluebird factor is when when the animated would put her hand out and the bluebird would land on her finger and she would sing to it. That's not where the in in the music accented those moments. And what I did was I I tweaked those moments so therefore it was more about hers as a living person who had these emotions and and this aspect uh, in life and her and what her goals were. Um, and then on Aladdin, it's you know we. Went through a few people, a few people casting here and there. Uh, when we landed on like Will Smith and and Naomi, Naomi Scott and and these people, as soon as like as soon as Will's hired, I'm like, uh, I <laughs> I know what we're doing. A friend like me, I mean, I know I know where we're going with that. You know, it's uh, so many influences came in, and uh, and I just knew that we're going to go for you know bring in some you know old school hip hop drums and, and give Will a chance. You know, we had a section of music created. Uh, my arranger and I, Chris Benstead, we created the the you know mu music track, and then we had this you know like middle eight say this little bridge, and we're like, here's this. And it was just like a little bit of a like a little a beat. He's like, what do you want to do here? Like, you know, I had a little microphone right there, and I just said, what do you want to do? He goes, let's beatbox. I'm like, let's do it. You know, so it's like you know you have a, you, each 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 film brings its own uh you know natural ideas of what you want to do to the music to to you know make make it work with these actors and their aspects and also what that helps with the audience interesting i mean and i i think that makes a lot of sense it has to be a a film by film determination and yeah i i i don't know i i think that's just kind of really cool um you know not it's not exactly doing it on the fly but kind of ensuring that everything can um, you know, have its own unique aspects that will make it stand out, both, you know, from films coming out, but also from uh, the, you know, the the prior version, if if one exists. Yeah. yeah. And you'd you'd mentioned uh, working on Disenchanted. Is there um, anything that you can tell us about that project right now? I know it's still a, a little just, ways out. Yeah, we're in post production. Um, it'll be out uh, a little bit less than a year next next. Mm. Uh, uh, next third quarter next year and um it's alan mankin uh music uh lyrics by stephen schwartz that i mean when they two, those two get together it's it's all magic we have brilliant brilliant songs uh, just incredible incredible new all new original songs and uh and uh the cast is back amy amy adams is back and singing like a champion like she does adina menzel is back she might, she might do a little bit of singing, a little, <laughs> little surprise for people. Uh, she didn't sing in the original, you know, one of our greatest vocalists around and uh, she didn't really? sing in the original. Oh, wow. 
Like I guess know, I didn't even I didn't even realize that. It's been a while since I've seen Enchanted. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and James Marsden is back. Love James. Uh, I did hairspray with him. He's a good friend. I love him. Um, and uh, yeah, the cast is back, and it's uh, really fun. Uh, we're you know we're right in the middle of post, so we're still pulling it together. Awesome. I mean, I'm you know candidly, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, it took me a long time to see enchanted i think you know when it around when it came out i thought it was uh too cool and, and too yeah. much of a of a man to, to yeah. watch it but to, I'm, not sure total I, mistake. I'm not sure if i mentioned the pasture empty is back as well and and, and also a little surprise little could be some surprises in store with him too yeah <laughs> awesome and you know matt i i did want to kind of circle all the way back mm -hmm. and kind of talk about how you came into this role, how you created it, how, you know, your, your uh, work pre Chicago kind of led you into this. Yeah. I was, I, I, I'm a person who got super lucky in life and I, and I landed, I landed a job and a career um, that I believe that I was meant to do. Um, I moved to, I moved to LA in, uh, in uh, 1999 to be an actor or something creative I yeah. moved from New York City, and I was like, I want to do something creative, and I and uh, and I didn't I didn't know what it would be, but I but I thought acting would be my way in. So I came there doing some acting, uh, did a lot of classes. I I, uh, I I did a lot of any work that I could find. I treated it as as a business, and every day I woke up and and if someone offered me to be on the set to do anything, I I was there, and uh, and and then I uh, met. Uh, I met Randy Spenlove, who was the head of music at Miramax. Um, he was strangely my landlord. And then, uh, <laughs> and then one, one of my cousins married uh, a brother of Maureen Crow, who is a music supervisor who did Bodyguard. And I wanted to, in, to I wanted just all I wanted to do is meet, introduce the two of those guys together because I thought let's help friends. And and I hadn't really met Maureen before. And I was like, well, you know, I want to help people. And when I introduced them, they just said, well, you're a musician. I grew up being a musician. I played piano since I was nine years old. And they're like, well, you're a musician and you, you want to get into something. Want, you know, Maureen's like, why don't you come work for me? I was like, great, let's do it. And, you know, started off, you know, organizing CDs and answering phones for, you know, about nine, nine months or so. <laughs> and, uh, and then I saw that uh, uh, some films, I always kept out for what films were happening. And, uh, and I, I saw Chicago was being made. And I was like, Maureen would be perfect for that because she did Bodyguard and she's a fantastic music supervisor. And uh, I, we chased it down and the two of us got Chicago. And I was on set every day of Chicago and I worked with Rob Marshall. And uh, there's one, I just remember one thing that happened on the set of Chicago where some, something happened with the music that it was wrong, it was incorrect. And I quick, quickly, uh, was in Pro Tools, and I said, "Well, what if we do this? We cut this, do this, and this." And in about ten minutes or so, we, uh, uh, we I fixed it. And Rob Marshall, who was directing it, looked at me. He said, "Don't ever question yourself. You know what you're doing. This is your job." I said, "Okay, great." <laughs> and from that point forward, I just said, "Okay, let's. This is my job. This is my career." Wow. Oh, expanding it. So th that was like a lot of on set work and post production, but. As I went through the years and doing films, um, uh, my next Rob Marshall film was, um, was uh, I did Rent and a couple other ones. And then Nine, I did in 2009. So the 2002 was Chicago, 2009 was the movie Nine. And when I went to go work with Rob again, Rob is like, it's going to be you and me, we're doing the music together. We're, we're recording the vocals, producing the vocals together. And so at that point I became a music producer, the music producer. And, uh, and as, as I just keep going on and on and through my career, I'm just learning from the greats, great orchestrators, great arrangers. So I get involved in, in arrangements. Um, I get involved, you know, I think before, yeah, before nine, what actually was, uh, was dream girls where Randy Spenlove and I both worked together on, and uh, we were, producing the music, producing the vocals, uh, arranging, doing all the arrangements. And I just, you know, on the job learning, you know, just kept on my music, my music career, my music talents growing up. And I think my acting, uh, my acting history kind of helped me work with actors, work with musicians, be on set, 
uh, work in Pro Tools, work in Logic, and uh, and it's kind of kind of it's just it's all the right skills for for the position I'm in. Yeah, I mean, and it you know considering that the job was basically created on set, it it's really interesting how you know how much of it it sounds like it's taking your skills and then just requiring you to when faced with a, a problem or a situation or a new set of responsibilities to then be like, okay, how am I going to, you know, what do I need to learn? How am I going to tackle this? And then yeah. just going. And the, and the job, the job is the job and I, it, it expands and you have a lot more responsibility. I, I did as I, from Chicago to now, I have a lot more responsibility on my shoulders, but the job really doesn't change heck of a lot because mm-hmm. on a set of West Side Story, we're we're in the quintet where Riff goes past the church and he says tonight and we the camera we, you know I work with the camera swing up where it's a da da ding and we go to the church and there's uh, there's Anita sing in, sitting in the church uh, starts to sing but we needed more time to get the camera to be in the church and creep down towards her but it was it was literally like seconds later you know in seconds it was seconds later that she started singing steven's like oh no 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 i need more time so we you know went off to the side sat in pro tools i'm like how am i going to make more time it's 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 kind of like how do i create time without writing more music and and uh in pro tools after about 10 minutes i just took a piece of music from the beginning slid it in took the or the sax there's a little saxophone lick and put that in a different spot and then she started singing uh, i can't remember the exact amount of measures later and we carried it at camera we reversed the camera and steven just looked at me and started you know give me a, like excitement i was like great you know so it's the same thing as on the set of chicago i helped rob in that and he helped it so the job doesn't change terribly much but it's a lot of fun i mean i i find that aspect of the musical so fascinating i mean any any film already is you know a million different moving pieces that seems like a a miracle that it gets created at all um and then when you you take the musical and it just adds so many more elements that when you really start thinking about it it's like how does this all work together and yeah it's moments like that yeah planning uh planning and being ready you know it's uh, you know it's always just being you know having the skills and being ready that's you know, that's luck as well right uh just you know being prepared when opportunity presents itself and that's kind of you know it's been my uh mantra in life be ready and prepare be prepared <laughs> oh and i guess you know probably looking at at your career and and you know zooming back even further like i think the the musical's been kind of one of the the foundations of film for the last you know since it's almost its inception you know, going back, films grown from opera. Um, you know, what do you think it is about the the musical that drives people to to watch and that gets us so yeah. fascinated? You know, it's 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 a really hard hard question because it, it is a divisive uh, genre. I think there's some people, like you said, you're not a fan of musicals, so it is a bit of a divisive genre and. It's something that where I feel like I get hired because I I'm able to help hopefully bridge that gap and make it more accessible to people mm-hmm. um, through my musical likes and sensibilities. You know, I, I I definitely make movies for what I would want to see, and I do think about what the audience would want to see. Um, but you know, music and music and film go together i mean just you just say the words you know music and film it's they just go together and you know hans zimmer is a great composer and uh, and and you know all these leonard bernstein's a great composer and they they did they, they do these beautiful scores and people people nowadays know know these wonderful you know harry gregson williams all, all these you know tom newman and uh and so music goes with film and it's introducing the the singing aspect which is which throws people and what yeah. we need to do is 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 make that more accessible less abrupt to to the to the to the you know the watcher of the film and and that's what i really strive for 
in my movies to make it feel as natural as possible and feels that an extension of a scene um, as much as possible. And the, the great the great directors do it with the camera, do it with sets and, and, and editing. So it's a big collaborative process, but that's, I think that's the main thing is it's getting people to feel the, 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 the switch from singing, uh, from dialogue into the singing. That's a, that's a big thing that, uh, that will help the audience. Yeah, I mean, and, and we talked about it before. I think that's what works so well in West Side Story. I mean, you, you know, you said it. I'm, I'm uh, admittedly not, you know, the biggest musical guy, but seeing that in theaters on the big screen, I mean, mm. it's it's such an immersive, enveloping experience. And so, you know, I a lot of people have already seen it. I hope more people do because, you know, it's uh, it's a me too. Movie. I hope so, you know, safely go to the theater, but it is a film that every frame of the visual is a painting it's beautiful and and uh janus uh, our, our our dp did a just an, an incredible job and 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 i don't think when you see the you know i have a big tv and a big theater at home but when i see the uh the images and the trailers at home i just i know in my head from being in the theater seeing it quite a few times it's just gorgeous up on the screen yeah. and it sounds incredible on the screen sean murphy who is our uh you know your score podcast we can't go without mentioning sean <laughs> murphy who engine recorded and mixed the uh the, the new york phil we did a little bit of la phil because of the covid uh, yeah. of it all we shot the movie in 2019 pre-covid and we were post-production during covid um so just incredible, you know, John Williams guy and just everyone. He's the great Sean Murphy and David Channing, who was our uh, score and song uh, editor and, and Eric, who works with the two of them, just did an incredible job. So when you're in a theater, especially Atmos, like I said before, and just surround, it's, you're hearing this score like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Uh, it's an immersive, you're sitting in the middle of the New York Philharmonic with these beautiful images and exciting dramatic images, you know, happening in front of you. So it's a, it's a beautiful experience. No, I mean, it, it absolutely is. And, you know, I, I can't stress enough. I was just like, so blown away by the whole thing. And it's, it's Great. that combination of everything that, you know, you, you sit back. Luckily, I, I had a, a reclining chair so I could uh, <laughs> lead myself even further yeah. and just let it all wash over me. It's great. Great. So, but I think, I think that's a, a great place to wrap up. Um, once again, I really do appreciate you joining me. It was a, no, it was a pleasure I, talking to you. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, enjoy getting back to snowboarding very soon. Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> it's right out there. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you.